A blessed Wednesday to all of you, of course, from here at the Heritage. How are you? Yan ang unang tanong natin. And I'd like to welcome everybody joining us in virtual, in any platforms that you are joining us tonight. And I'd like to thank our guests that are joining us for the first time and our regular viewers, families, friends, and not to forget all our chapters here in Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. And hi to all our chapters abroad here, of course, Hong Kong, unahin natin yung Hong Kong, UAE, um, Japan, ayan, nandiyan sila, meron din tayo mga chapters na nandiyan dyan, and Mongolia, of course, let us uh, just wave our hands for them and welcome them from UK, Madrid, Africa, Uganda, someone watching also in um, Africa, but not in Uganda, sa South, si Banji. And of course, we'd like to greet those in America, uh, the USA, sa California, sa East Coast, ang mga taga-Canada, at lahat-lahat kayong mga nanonood ngayon. So, but we, before we begin our new series, which is a series of a new you for a new year series, okay? We'll begin part one, and this is Living Large. Let me be joined by all of you in a short prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, Father in Heaven, in the name of your Son, we would like to lift up to you each other, especially, Lord, as I will deliver your message. Please, Lord, allow your servant to be able to deliver your message, Lord, as you owe to deliver this. Make me just be your mouthpiece. And I ask you to please send for your Holy Spirit to all of us to guide us, to teach us, and also to remind us of all what we're going to hear tonight. Marami po salamat and everything that we are asking you, this is for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like you to please watch our beautiful video. Back about 23 years ago, when our clocks struck the new millennium, a book was introduced to the church by Bruce Wilkinson called The Prayer of Jabez. Prior to this time, Jabez was an unsung hero found tucked away in the Old Testament book of First Chronicles and its genealogies. No one knew of this man Jabez or his prayer. The book, The Prayer of Jabez, and the many study materials which accompanied it impacted our world for a short time. The emergence of this man's life from the Bible and his prayer resonated with the church and some outside the church. People were buying up the little book in masses. They were studying each word of his prayer in detail. They started Bible studies using the book. Movements were started. If you recall back, Y2K came along with a changing clock of the new millennium. The Y2K scare was a buzz everywhere, and if you believed the worst reports, everything was going to shut down in our society at the stroke of midnight. The doomsday prophets cried that life was going to come to a screeching halt. Power plants were going to shut off, water was going to stop flowing through the faucets, Computers were going to crash, planes could crash, and a host of other things. Some people were telling people to prepare for a major disaster. Some people feel prey to the fear, the turmoil, and listened to the doomsday messages. 
I think the worst thing I heard was an electric train shut down somewhere in the world due to the glitch. In the midst of the unknown and maybe a fear of the future, this little book emerge onto the scene and picks up momentum, encouraging people, giving people hope, and reminding them that God is here for us if we call on Him. It highlighted an unsung hero in the life and history of Israel. Okay, I'm back. So as I look back many years later, the book of Jabez and his message has faded. The story of Jabez has drifted back into the background of a very busy and stressed out life. And it slowly drifted back into the pages of the Old Testament and its long list of names. But it is still has a small, tiny flashlight shining on that message, no? And in half-price bookstores, some websites, and some people's bookshelves, yes, it is stuck in a very small, dark corner somewhere in the churches or Western churches. So today, I want to turn a spotlight back unto this two-line message from Scripture. Turn your Bible with me in First Chronicles 4, 9 to 10. Maganda yan. Sabay-sabay tayo nag-aaral. Okay? The first is a face that stands out when we will read this uh, chapter, the Chronicles. Okay? Um, I'd like you to please... Um, just imagine that we are on a camera and the camera is just sharing with us no faces of different people that are listening to the to the teachings and let us go now and turn our bible to first chronicles and in the first nine chapters okay napa importante nito there is a list of 500 names 500 names and these names make up the official family tree of the Hebrew tribes, beginning with Adam, continuing up to Israel's return from captivity. And these long lists are enough to put anyone to sleep. Kaya hindi na natin babasahin ang dami. Okay? So most of the names are just listed without any editorial comment. But there are a few points that stand out in the first couple chapters. So let's read, for example, the first Chronicles 1, verse 19. One, together, one was named Peleg, because in his time the earth was divided. And on verse 3 of chapter 2, it says there, Er was wicked in the Lord's sight. So the Lord put him to death. And on verse 7 of the same chapter, Achar, who brought trouble on Israel. And so we have one guy who is given a name that means division. Another man was wiped out because of his wickedness. And then the third guy that I mentioned was known as one who brought trouble to Israel. In other words, troublemaker. You is a man wicked. You is a man uh, divisive. Okay. Now let's turn to the forty-four names into the chapter. A man named Javes. Javes prays a fourfold paradigm-breaking prayer. And let us together read First Chronicles four nine to ten. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Cried out to, the, to God of Israel, 
Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted this request. So ulitin natin yun na, eto, okay, this is his prayer. Okay, bless me. Okay, lagyan natin yan. And then number two, enlarge my territory or um, give me more places to conquer. Okay. And then let your hand be with me. Number four, keep me from harm. And the fifth is I will be free from pain. And, and because of these five requests, it says there, God granted his request. Wow. We're beginning a new series now called A New You for a new year. And there are shadows in the life of this man that we are talking about, the Jabez. Okay? His character is very strong. That's number one, very strong. So the first clue comes from the opening praise. It says there, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. So, nakita natin ito na kakaibahan niya sa kanya mga siblings. And this says something more about his brothers than it does about Jabez. Kasi, uh, may nation dun, yung, than his brothers. So, when we read that he was more honorable than they were, it indicates that they were somehow dishonorable, hindi po ba? So, in contrast to his family's bad reputation, Jabez is regarded as a remarkable exception. At ang word is honorable. Gusto niyo po ba maging honorable? Kasi isa po ito sa katangian ni Jabez kung bakit po napakalakas ang kanyang prayer. So, would you like your prayers also? That the Lord will bless you, increase your territory, no harm can befall you. And then, hindi po ba nagawa po ng Panginoon yung limang sinabi niya. But something happened in this man's life. Something that took him from pain to glory. And it is said that the difference between the ordinary and also the extraordinary is the willingness to do the extra. and ba yung mga extra? Alam niyo yung willingness to do the extra. Tayo pong mga manggagawa ng Lord. We are serving God. Are you willing? For example, in Matthew 5, are you willing to walk another mile you know, for your enemy? Are you willing to offer your cheek you know, when you are uh, persecuted? Are you feeling that you are more blessed? Are you willing to do more you know, give more time to serve, in, to serve God or ino orasan lang natin, Lord? Or are we just limiting what we would like to do and meron lamang limitations? So, this is not called extra because it is just ordinary. So, when extra uses, higit pa, hindi pa, basigit pa. So, ito po yung katangian ni Jabez, no? He was doing and willing to do extra. Yan. Okay? So tayo mga nandito sa community, sa church, uh, are we also willing to stay a little bit just to, you know, just say, thank you for coming. Okay, God bless you. See you next week. Or, hindi pa natatapos ang prayer meeting, ang praise and worship. Ah, lahat. Ang bilis-bilis mo na wala ka na. Yung iba, hindi pa natatapos yung kompleto. Ubalis na rin. Even in our masses, no? Sometimes, like in my own life before, I used to, you know, I used to think that when I go to church, parang sine, ko ano yung inabutan ko, ganun lang. So, kung ang inabutan ko, homily, pagdating na ng homily, aalis na rin ako. So that is not right, that is not complete, that is not extra, no? Yun yung sinasabi natin dito. And um, that's the extraordinary of Jabez's life, no? 
And is it yours also that um, you are willing to walk another mile, serve God, until wala kang age, no? Talaga, yung iba naman kasi nagde-declare na sila. I'm going to be senior next month and I'm prepared already not to serve anymore because, you know, siyempre, senior na, I, I don't think I will be able to come regularly. So, minsan, we're already, you know, we're already thinking of what sicknesses or what excuses we will give for not coming. Remember, Moses was used by the Lord at the age of 80. Hindi tayo mabibilang lamang ng age, okay? Now, Javes owned the distinction of being more honorable than those around him. Ano ba itong word na honorable sa Tagalog ay uh, kagalang-galang, hindi po ba? Uh, katangi-tangi, di ba? Okay. It comes from the word kabod, to be heavy. And then the negative is burdensome or severe. Positive demand is ito, abound. Abound more great multitude or magnitude, glory. So this is being honorable, speaks to the character. Character po yan. Responsibility and respect of the person. And Jabez went from being a pain to being more honorable. His life take a turn for the realm of glory as he abounds into greatness not made on his own. Only too frequently do the instances of our past lives affect the course of the future. It is frequently said, Nothing can change the past. Totoo naman, di po ba? And the Bible paints a different picture. Since repentance, conversion, if we are uh, the one that is erring, and forgiveness, if we are the one sinned against, but have the power to alter our perception of the past. Ibig sabihin, Kahit na tayo po ay nagkaroon ng hindi magandang karanasan before, the past, are we able, brothers and sisters, to adjust to the new life or new year and a new, new day for our, all, all ourselves? Thereby, they also change the direction of our future. So, question, what made the difference in this man's life? Ano po ang naging kakaiba sa kanyang mga kapatid sa buhay ni Jabez. Well, wala pong iba kundi who, he, you know, it was all pointing to one point characterized by causing pain. To become a man remembered as more honorable than his brothers. And the third distinction of the life of Jabez is his prayer life. Pag sinabi mong your honor, ibig sabihin ay nandun lahat ang katangian ng taong yun. So number two, he was described as a pain to his mom. There is a power of a name and its impact on our lives. As I explored our two-line story today from uh, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, listen to this, listen to this which is a short message with a very big idea. And I paid attention to the meaning of Jabez's name, which to me became important to get a little background on this man's life. So let's look for a moment at the meaning of his name. Ayan. Okay. Kami mga magulang and your parents as well, Lahat po halos, halat, lahat po halos, ah, search high and low for the right name with the right meaning. Why? Because we wanted our children name, named or names to help them to succeed in life and to have bl the blessing of God on their life. For example, brothers and sisters, yung iba naman kasi, pinapakalanan yung kanilang mga anak 
mula doon sa kanilang hinahanga ang mga movie stars, mga personality, di ba? So when Bob and I named our daughter Migmig, we got the name from St. Michael. And uh, Michael means who is like God. Yan, ang ibig sabihin ng Michael or Michaela. So those na merong pangalang Michael at may anak na Michael, lagay nyo dyan. Okay, kung ikaw naman yung Michael, wow, lagay mo din dyan. Okay, okay. Ang meaning ng pangalan mo, brother or sister, for Michael and Michaela, who is like God. Yan, who is like God. So yung Juana, dinagdag ko yun, ang ibig sabihin nun, God is gracious. God is gracious. But at the time, nung nilalagay na namin ng pangalan ni eh, Mik Mik, ay hindi ko naman po tinignan ko anong pangalan ang ibig sabihin ng Juana. Basta type na type ko lang yung sounds, Juana. Okay? Pero si, yung Michaela naman, uh, in fact, si Bobby, dahil alam niyo naman yung old life ng asawa ko, no? eh, medyo mahilig sa toba, tomadol, at ang kanyang laging uh, naaalalang ininomay ang San Miguel. Okay? No. So, sabi niya, pag lalaki, Miguel, Michael, okay? Eh, naging babae, Michaela. So, hindi rin naman namin alam na yan ang meaning na who is like God. Okay? Kinuha lang namin yan doon sa, yun nga, sinabi ko sa inyo. So, ito pang Roberto na ito na, na pangalan. Ang ibig pala sabihin niyan ay bright fame. Wow! Bright fame. Hmm. So, sino mga Roberto? Lagay, lagay, lagay. Ayan. Ayan. Bright fame. Famous. Now, my name is Maria associated with Beloved. And of course, Marami po mga Pilipinos, marami po tayong pinapangalan na may Maria. Maria Lourdes, kami magkakapatid, Maria Lourdes, Maria Rita, Margarita, so yan. So, si Joey, uh, Maria Joselito yun. O, kahit lalaki, pinapangalan. Bakit po? Kasi para maging huwaran, maging maging tulad din ni Mama Mary, no? pure and holy and the mother of God. So, yung Teresa or Teresa comes from the word harvester. Noon, hindi ko naman alam na harvester yan, but now I'm living to my name because I am harvesting souls for God. Yan, Teresa. Okay? And I was called by my family and friends, nung maliliit pa ako, Tessie. Kaya pag meron akong naririnig kayong Tessie, pamilya ko yan, mga kamag-anak ko yan, at mga kaibigan ko when I was in elementary hanggang high school. They also, my, one of my best friends si Cynthia, tawag niya sa akin ay Tere. Ay, tere. Pero bihira naman akong tawagan ng Tere. Okay. Yung Tessie, ay nakuha ko yung pangalan na yan sa college, eh, sa UST. Kasi dami naming mga Teresa doon. Eh, siyempre, when you are painting, you need to uh, write your signature affix on the on the painting, on your on your uh, canvas. So, Techi ang nilalagay doon. I think someone from my schoolmate or college mate uh, called me Techi. Okay, anyway, that. So, hanggang ngayon, yan ang tawag tuloy sa akin. Meron na lang Sister Techi sa Charismatics, okay? Pero, until now, my friends, no, na noon, tsaka some of my family are still calling me Techi, eh, no? De, parang hindi sila sanay ng Techi. So, I don't, I don't mind. Now, I'm pandy cold sore, no? Uh, Isaiah 40, 30, yan ang inspiration na We will soar like the eagles. We will run and run, and we will not grow tired. Ayan. So, ba't naman ako kaya naging soar? Well, um, may silang, isi-share ko lang. 
Kasi dito, since I became the uh, founder of some community like the Love Flock in 1982, and then the Lord's Flock 1986, usually yung mga head ng, uh, ng mga congregation or ng community, tinatawag nilang SOR, S-O-R. Kaya sa mga nasa mga madre, SOR. So yun ang bansag nila. And one time, my, my grandson, Erin, um, was asking, why am I called sore when he, he came here in the Philippines? But before that, he used to wonder why I come and go and come and go in Tagalog. Sabi niya, Lola, bakit ikaw dating ales, dating ales? So, uh, probably because I would live around Thursday if I'm going to Europe or Friday, if I'm going to just um, the different states ng USA, and then come back Monday evening or Tuesday morning. So, ilang araw lamang, makikita na naman niya ako sa bahay, kaya, and I did not even know that he thought I was an, a flight attendant, and he was telling uh, his teacher that, I am a flight attendant, and only did I knew when one day I was in the school, and then tinanong ako ng teacher na, oh, uh, did you what, what flight have you come from now? I said, oh, I just came from um, New York, New Jersey, and uh, he said, so, what uh, airlines are you working for? Uh, sabi ko, I'm not working for any airlines. Oh, I thought you were a flight attendant. So I go, no. Um, but um, I corrected it and I said, because I fly, I always fly. I use the airplane and to fly and uh, for my mission, not for one other else, no other reason, but I am on a mission. I am a modern missionary. And then, yun nga, sabi ni, ni Erin sa akin, is it because you're always flying. So he started calling me S-O-A-R, SOAR. And you know, God always confirmed the name. Because when I arrived here in the Philippines, si Sister uh, Mabs at saka si Paolo, meron binigay sa akin na, ano to, na napakaganda na paperweight na kalagay SOAR. So it was a present given to me and tamang tama kasasabi lang ni Erin yung sa akin. So the, it became my name. No, I spell my name now as S O A R rather than S O R. And many many people call would like to call me Sor rather than Sister Techi, especially those that are close to me. So in biblical times, the name given to a person often meant the character or the flight in life of he or she might walk. For instance, Jacob means supplanter or one who tricks. He tricks his brother, di po ba, out of the birthright, di ba? Dinaya niya yung kanyang tatay, pretending na siya po yung uh, panganay, di po ba? Kaya yun ang naging pangalan ni Jacob. Okay? Then si David, his name, which means beloved, became also later on called man after God's own heart. Okay? Because of his, you know, he was making songs, preparing songs, singing, and worshiping God. And Jeremiah, for example, he is also known as the weeping prophet. But God hurls or throws, you know, ibig sabihin, God hurls or throws. And he was thrown as a prophet into a nation of self-righteous people. Yeah. And let's go to Jesus. Jesus means, anybody? Lagay na muna natin. Okay, yes, okay. You're right, God saves. Sabi ng isang bata, ah, si, si Jesus pala ay mahilig mag-ipon. Kasi God saves. Naku, hindi po yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Ayon sa batang yun, hindi yun ang ibig sabihin na 
si Jesus ay nag-iipon, kundi God saved, sabi sabihin, siya po ay merciful, that He saved us and He gave us salvation so that we are not going to hell. Because we deserve, as sinners, to go to hell. But Jesus means God saves. Amen? Amen? That's why, you know, when you are sick, when you are, um, meron pong aksidente, no? One time we had an, almost we met an accident dito sa Bayadak. What I said is, Jesus, Jesus, I praise you, Jesus. It means, save, save me, Jesus. Amen? So, uh, God saves, and through his life, death, and resurrection, he saves mankind. So, I also find it, inter it interesting in the Bible, in instances when God or Jesus changed people's names to reflect their destiny and his specific mission for their lives. May question na naman ako sa inyo. You may be thinking, why did God sometimes change a person's name in the Bible? The answer is, when God changes a person's name and gave him a new name, it was usually to establish a new identity do sa taong yun. Let's uh, take uh, Abraham for example. God changed the, the name Abram or Abrams, which means high father. And then change this into Abraham in Genesis 17, verse 5, when the Lord gave him the command that he is going to establish a nation and he wants Abraham to be the father of the multitude or the father of many nations. And his wife named from Sarai, Sarai dati din, ano? into my princess, ang ibig sabihin ng Sarai, my princess, and to Sarah, okay, Sarai from Sarah, which means mother of nations. Genesis 17, verse 15. Uh, well, um, there's also uh, one of the commentaries I heard that Sarah was also named Sarah because the meaning is laughter, okay? So, so God changed Jacob's supplanter's name to Israel. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Having power with God, yun ang ibig sabihin na Israel. Your names have different meanings. And maybe later after this, search the meaning of your name. Okay? And then live to your name. Solomon means peace. And remember, why was he called peace? Because he was the first king of Israel to reign without going to war. Oh, ito naman ngayon, di ba? Let, let's see the disciples. Like, for example, Nathaniel was Bartimaeus. Okay? And then we have Simon. Jesus changed Simon's name, meaning God has heard. To name to Peter, the rock, John 1, 42. So si Peter, why did Jesus occasionally call Peter? Did you not notice this? Um, if you're observant, if you have observed, there are times the Lord would address Peter Simon, but there are times he would address him Peter. So why did uh, Jesus occasionally call Peter Simon? Have you observed that? That sometimes the Lord would call him Peter. After that, he had changed his name uh, to Simon. Some, sometimes he would change it to Peter. Well, this pro would probably be the reason, number one, because Simon sometimes acted like his old self. Instead of being firm, solid in character, like the rock, no? If it's a being, Sure, solid, and movable. So God called him Peter when he is acting as rock, you know, which is what, what God, or what Jesus called him to be. So, pag sinabi ni Lord Simon, ibig sabihin, no, yung dati niyang buhay uli ang nakikita ng Lord. Okay, you notice that, and please, no, tignan nyo ilang number of times sa gospel that the Lord would change Peter 
to Simon, Simon to Peter. And the same is true for Jacob. God continued to call him Jacob to remind him of his past and to remind him also to depend on God's strength. So, pinapakilala lang ng Panginoon sa kanya kay Jacob na kung ano yung ginawa mo noon, okay, di ba, nandaya siya, na nang pinatawad na siya ng Panginoon at nagdepend na siya sa strength ng Diyos. Peter's name was changed by the Lord from Simon to Peter. Where is it? In Matthew 16, 13 to 20. It says there, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? Tinanong niya. He asked, Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, Dalawang pangalan na nilagay dito, no? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So may meaning yun, ha? Okay, then. Verse 17, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. There you are. Kaya, nakasagot, nakatugon ng tama si Peter ay because it was revealed to him by the Father in heaven. On verse 18, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hades or hell will not overcome it or will not, will not overtake it. So verse 19, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Kaya nga, di ba? For us Catholics, we believe na kung ano man ang ang pinatawad sa atin sa ating um, sacrament of reconciliation ay pinatawad na rin ng Diyos. At kung, at kung yung, mga, yung mga kasalanan naman natin na re-retain natin ay retain din na hindi tayo napatawad. Verse 20, Then he warned his disciple not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Let's go to the next. Alam natin, kilala natin si Saul. Ano ba ang dati niyang pangalan? Saul. Pero ano pinalitan sa kanya? Paul. There you are. We know that Saul's name was changed to Paul. And si St. Paul ay isa sa mga napakagaling at napakagandang example of conversion. Hindi po ba? from the persecutor of the church in Acts 9 uh, with heart that is really, you know, um, murderous. Nakita natin that he was there again to persecute Christians and punish them. But look at this. Saul, we know that Saul's name changed to Paul after his conversion. And uh, you will note this in Acts 13, verse 9. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimas and said, So why did God choose new names for some people? Well, the Bible doesn't give us its specific reason, but perhaps it was to let them personally know that they were destined okay, for a new mission in life. And the new name was a way to let them in on the divine plan and also to assure them that God's plan would be fulfilled with them. Kaya ngayon, I live to my name as harvesters. So harvester, tsaka soar, na nag, nag-mission ako, nagpa-fly, no? Sa iba't ibang lugar, kaya nga lang, you know, this pandemic is so contagious na talagang, you know, uh, it limited my, my, uh, my job as traveling, no, and uh, for three years, medyo limited pa rin ang aking uh, pagwa-fly, no. So the same could be said for all of us today who claim the glorious name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Our name is now Christian. 
Yan ang pangalan natin lahat. Lahat tayo, mga kapatid, ikaw ako, lagay nyo, my name is now Christian. There you are, Christian. But it is not always been so, hindi po ba? Christian, ang ibig sabihin niya ni Christ no? in us. Makikita na follower tayo, na tayo sumusunod, tayo ay kaisa ng Diyos. Kitang-kita nila ang kahawig natin, ang pagkakahawig natin sa Panginoon. That's why in Antioch, they were first called Christians kasi they knew that these people, this man, were companions of Jesus. Hindi po ba? Okay, even in Acts 2, they, they really perceived that this ordinary man were indeed companions of Christ. So Christ without Christ to our name, I am nothing, yun yung I A N. That title was given to us the moment we believed. Yeah. When we believed the day we took God at His word and accept the gift of eternal life, when we made Him as our personal Lord and Savior, this was offered to us. We were called Christians. For us Catholics, when we were baptized in the sacrament of baptism, nabaliliit pa tayo, kaya nga tinawag na Christiani because of the word Christian. Okay, magiging follower na tayo ni Lord Jesus Christ. Prior to the name change, we are all graceless. You are graceless, I am graceless, wala tayong ka-grace-grace. Grace. Hindi po ba? Kahit pangalan mo pa grace pag without Jesus before, wala tayong ka-grace-grace. Grace. Wala tayo talaga magagawa and we cannot even obey without God's grace. So, Jabez in our short story, big idea story and verses, we see the meaning of Jabez's name revealed. And his mother named him Jabez because of the pain he caused her at childbirth. Wow, stop, stop. Think about this for a moment. How would you like to be known for pain? Sinong gustong tawagin siya palagi ng ikaw ay talagang salot, ikaw ay Talagang sakit lang sa buhay namin. No, you are the pain on my neck. Hindi, di ba? So I imagine that he repeatedly heard this growing up. Lagi na itong naririnig. Lagi na naririnig ito, mga kapatid. And this name meant pain. And what kind of identity is that? How would you like your name to be known for bringing excruciating pain to your mother? Di ba ang hirap? Tawagin ka ng... Ah, yan ang pinakamalas, pinakamasama, pinakapangit sa mga anak ko. Diba? There are parents na ganyan, nagko-compare, di ba? And uh, that's why we have to bring our parents to, to the Lord para alam na nila. Hindi po ba? So, Jabez means pain. Wala nang ginawa ang mami mo kundi sabihin sa'yo, no? Alam mo, ikaw, hirap na hirap ako, papanganak na kita. Ako talagang, Kumotik na ako mamatay dahil sa'yo. So, ikaw naman. Ako, bat naman ako naging cause na kumotik siya mamatay? Hindi po ba? Eh, bata pa, sinasabi mo na yun sa anak mo. Napaka-negative natin, di ba? And, kawawa din yung mga bata kasi naririnig nila yun. So, she named him pain. No? So that he would always remember what he had done to his poor mother. So I had a relative who was a lot like Jake, Jabez's mother because, you know, she repeated the story of, okay, the story of how much pain her child, you know, uh, had caused her in birth. And she always liked to tell the old, old story when there were several people kami magpipinsan, sasabihin niya pa doon talaga. Alam mo yung pinsan yung to talaga, sa lahat ng mga pinsa nyo, sa lahat ng mga anak ko, nakikita nyo yung mga pinsa nyo, ito lang talaga yung pango. Walang ilong. Talagang pangong-pango. No? Mo. So, imagine nyo naman yun, di ba? Dapat, uh, kahit na ganun yung anak mo, you should not say that. Amen? So, other parents do something similar by rehearsing all the disappointments they have felt with their children and the pain it had caused them. 
Minsan tinatawag pa natin mga anak natin ng pintas, butiki. Pet-pet mo kasi. Hmm. Olive oil. Peggy. Kasi mukhang baboy. O. Oh. Yan. Naku, yung anak mo yan, si Juan Tamad yan. Napakatamad. Hindi mo maasahan yan, etc. So, some people with unfortunate to hilarious name, to the point of embarrassing, embarrassment, choose to change them and go. So, mga kapatid, we will end here because your name is important. And in Isaiah 49, the Lord said, I have written your name on the palm of my hands. Isaiah 49. Does a mother forget her baby? Yet, even if mother forgets, I will never forget you, my own. So, mga kapatid, ang pangalan mo mahalaga sa Diyos. Maaring hindi mahalaga sa ibang tao ang pangalan mo. Hindi mo gusto yung pinangalan sa iyo. Bakit ang, ang mga kapatid mo, yung ibang tao ang gaganda ng pangalan ba't sa iyo medyo mapakla? No? Eh, wala ko tayo magagawa. Ganyan talaga yung pangalan natin. Yung apelido natin. We did not choose our parents. Diba? We did not even choose kung ano dapat ang pangalan natin. No? Siguro gusto natin, sounds like American, di ba? Adams, di ba? Ganyan, no? O, di ba? O kaya, uh, Smith, no? Okay. So, okay na yan. Kung anong pangalan mo. Amen ba? So, don't get in baras kung ang pangalan mo ay hindi medyo maganda-ganda. Okay? So, we'll continue with this and let us just thank God that He calls us by our name. Isaiah 43, you are precious to me. Fear not. I call you by name. Amen? Okay. So, let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God in heaven, as we end our uh, part 1A, um, we would like to continue with our next um teaching next week and we ask you today to make us really love what you have named us it is not an accident lord that we are named this name so father we ask you to allow us just to accept lord the name you have given us after all lord what is now important is our christian name that we are yours and father in the name of your son the name above all names we would like to ask you to please grant us peace in our hearts grant us also comfort every time lord that we need to be comforted embrace us so tightly and lord we also ask you to please allow all those that are sick right now to experience your wonderful love despite of what they're experiencing that you are there as their healer do not let sickness uh, come to their bodies but we ask you to please allow your hands to touch each one of them and remove any sicknesses diseases pains from their bodies and all, Father, together we pray for your mighty power to again remind us that we're special because you have called us by our name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I'll see you next Wednesday. And thank you again for sharing your time with us. And I know you learned something. Valuable, hindi po ba? At assignment, hanapin yung mga pangalan nyo. At assignment tule, live to that name. Let your name be honorable before God and man. Bye for now and have a good evening. God bless. A blessed day to everyone. I am Brother Jimmy Esplanada, a member of the Lord's Flag Catholic Charismatic Ministry here in Los Angeles, 
California. When I was in kindergarten, my mom used to dress me like a girl and I have a long hair. It's because my eldest sister wants me to have a long hair. And from then on, people call me, Bakla! Bakla! I don't understand why they called me Bakla. It is because of my mannerisms and my voice. Through the years, I developed this pain, hatred, anger, and resentment to those people who bullied me. And it continued even when I was in high school. But I'll just accept it and just keep it to myself. Life must go on. Finally, in 1997, God called me to attend the Life in the Spirit Seminar in the Lord's Flock. That's where I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord, Savior, and Master. As I looked at the cross, I received God's forgiveness and felt His love. And the Lord's luck taught me that God created man and woman. And I have to accept myself for who I am and to live a holy life and follow His will. It was in the Lord's luck that I was able to learn to read the Bible, reflect on God's word day and night, spending time to pray as well as serving in the community. And while in the Lord's Flock, I am studying my accounting degree. And I ask for His grace to lead me. And He inspired me to go for higher education. That's where I took my master's degree in business administration. After my MBA, I also studied an education or units, CPE units, to qualify for me to took the board exam for teachers. Praise and thank God. I, I passed the board exam and finished my MBA. Mahirap maging working student. You know, if you're serving the Lord, God will just arrange everything and put it, your life in order. After which... I have this desire in my heart to be a nurse. Lord, I want to be a nurse. But we don't have the money. But indeed, God made a way. You know, brothers and sisters, my money that time is only 5,000 pesos. But I enrolled in nursing because of my faith. God indeed is the greatest provider. So I studied nursing for three years while serving in the community. And praise and thank God, I finished my nursing and took and passed the board exam. While serving in the community, I asked God to lead me if I will stay in the Philippines or work abroad. You know, I don't have money to pay for placement fees, but God is good. I was able to work in Vietnam okay, as an English teacher without paying any money. And I stayed there for a year. After which, I asked for God for the guidance again and He led me to Mongolia where I taught in an international college for six years. I remember when I was studying nursing, I have this prayer that, Lord, I want to be in America. I even sing the song, I want to be in America. I want to be in America. But when I was in Mongolia, I'll just forget it because I don't have money to go to the U.S. But my prayer is, Lord, if it's your will, you will make a way. In 2015, I arrived here in Los Angeles, California. It was an answered prayer for about 15 years. And then while I'm studying again here in the U.S. to pursue my master's degree in healthcare education, with God's provision, I was able to finish that degree. 
but I have this desire to be a nurse in the U.S. I have to take the two, two deficiencies. The pandemic came. You know what? The Board of Nursing here in California waived all the deficiencies. So I took the board exam. My first exam was in vocational nurse. And thank God I passed the board exam. And I even wrote my name in a piece of paper, Jimmy Estlanada RN. And it's a walk of faith because I'll finish my nursing like 10 years ago. So I asked God, Lord, please give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to pass this board exam. Knowing that I don't have a clinical background and it like 10 years ago, it's so hard to refresh all those subjects. But God is the God of the impossibilities. I passed the board exam in 2021. As I look back in my life, God had blessed me because I was able to forgive those people who hurt me. And I want to share with you three things in my life. First, to the parents, don't dress your sons with a dress like a girl because it could be an opening for a homosexual spirit. Second things, serve the Lord, be in prayer, be in a community because that's where we get our strength, guidance, and direction in our life. Third, obey the Lord and leave the consequences to Him. In life, we're not spared by trials, difficulties, and struggles. But we have a God within us to give us the strength and courage to face all life's trials and difficulties. For me, I choose to be near the cross and hold on to God. To God be the glory and honor. Thank you for joining us. We are the Lord's Flock Catholic Charismatic Community. You are welcome to join us to find the true life that God has destined for us to pursue. We are a place for all, to the married, solo parents, singles, young professionals, youth or the new generation and small world, we have small groups for you. To know more, visit our website flashed on the screen. If you missed our live teachings, they are available for replay on our website and our social media accounts. And if you are blessed and want to bless someone else, you may send your donations and prayer requests on our website. The life that God has given us is bountiful. Discover a blessed and fruitful life in God with us. To know more about us, check our website and socials or visit us at our center at number 5 Catanduanes Street, Quezon City. Thank you and hope to see you soon with us.